Coffee cake, crumb cake, coffee cake, crumb cake. Why not both? We're making cinnamon coffee crumb cake. Let's get to it. So what's the difference between crumb cake and coffee cake? Me being from Oregon, the West Coast, I have never even had crumb cake. I didn't even know it existed. I am a coffee cake girl, always had coffee cake. My friend Emily, who does our videography, she's from the East Coast and crumb cake is her life. So when we were trying to decide which one we wanted to make, we really could not decide. I wanted the cinnamon swirl, I wanted glaze, she wanted these giant, beautiful, delicious soft crumbs, so we combined them together to make the ultimate coffee crumb cake. So all of my ingredients are gonna be measured in ounces, and if you've been here for a while, you know that's nothing new, but if you are just joining us, let me just tell you real quick, I measure everything in ounces for accuracy. That way, all of my recipes are basically foolproof, and I know that traditionally, we're typically using cups, but I just, feel like cups leave way too much room for error. So if you're not familiar with using ounces, no worries, I have a really quick tutorial if you click on the link above to show you everything you need to know about using a scale. It's not expensive, it's not difficult, it's just something new, but I believe you can do it and your recipes will thank you. First things first, butter. All things good start with butter. Unsalted and softened, not melted. Softened just means you can poke your finger into the top of it, it leaves a little dent, but it's not like melting all over the place. Sugar, and we're gonna cream this together until it's nice and fluffy. That develops that nice light and airy structure in the cake. So if you like make your crumb cake and you're like, huh, it just didn't rise up very well and it's kind of dense, you may need to cream your sugar a little bit more. And before you guys ask, because I know you will, this is my Bosch Universal Plus Mixer. <laughs> yes, I love it more than my KitchenAid. Yes, I really do use it all the time. And you can get my affiliate link for it in the link below underneath the video in the description. All right, so now that it's nice and fluffy, we've developed the texture, we can go ahead and add in our eggs and sour cream. I took my sour cream out about an hour ago, but it still feels a little bit chilly, and I wanna make sure my sour cream is the same temperature as my eggs, so I'm just gonna microwave it for like 10 seconds. If you don't have sour cream, you can actually use buttermilk. You just want something acidic, and that's gonna help set the loaf so it doesn't collapse in on itself later. And now I'm gonna add in my vanilla. So at this point, your batter should, you know, look cohesive. It has big chunks of like cold butter in there, something was probably cold. So you want it to just kind of look like it's all one batter and then you know that you're on the right track. Go ahead and add in your flour, your baking powder, baking soda, and salt. And then we're just gonna mix until combined. Don't over mix. You could sift them separately and then put them in, but I just put the flour in and let the mixer do the sifting and combining for me. You could absolutely use a hand mixer for this recipe. It's, I feel like really only my cake recipes really require super careful uh, mixing with the reverse creamy method and all that, but regular baked goods, I mean, <laughs> if you've baked any of my cake recipes, you're like, wow, I'm just gonna cream this the normal style and I don't even have to be super accurate. It's easy, super easy. All right, so now we're gonna make our cinnamon for the cinnamon swirl. Super easy, just brown sugar and cinnamon. And then we're gonna make our big crumbly topping for the crumb layer. Oh, so good. Brown sugar. If you have any sort of big lumps, you can uh, just pass this all through a sifter. And then for the crumb topping, we've got flour, brown sugar, white sugar, salt, cinnamon, and butter. This is slightly over softened butter, still not quite melted, but very soft. You just don't want it to be cold. And I'm just gonna press this together with my spatula until we get some big old crumbs. We're basically just trying to get rid of the flour. And we see our big crumbs formulating. I'm gonna move to the most important tool, my hands, clean hands. Just kind of squish it together those big crumbs. I wonder who figured this out? Somebody who just like really loves cinnamon sugar topping. It's like, I know, I'm gonna make a cake that's mostly just cinnamon sugar crumbs. There we go. If your crumbs look like they're a little bit too dry, you could just pop the whole thing in the microwave for probably about five seconds just to get that butter a little bit more softened and then just keep working it with your hands until it starts sticking together. 
<laughs> okay, those crumbs look good to me. All right, so I've got my loaf pan here and I'm gonna start assembling. If you haven't already, make sure you've set your oven to 350 degrees uh, so that it's all fully preheated. If your oven is cold when you put the cake in there, it's not gonna set the loaf properly and you might get a sunken middle, which would be sad. All right, this pan is like an eight, four by eight, and it is roughly two and a half inches tall. Uh, just in case you have different size pans, the cooking time is going to vary vastly. So just make sure if you want it to be exactly like mine, you're using a pan very similar to this one, or uh, you're increasing the amount of batter, or increasing or decreasing the amount of time. If you had a square pan that was eight by eight, uh, you would use this exact same amount of batter. It would just be more spread out and shorter. And that's more of like a traditional, like crumb cake style cake. So you'd be totally fine. Um, but if you're making like a really huge bunt cake or a larger size loaf pan, you're gonna need more batter. Eight by eight would definitely take less time because it's just not as thick and it's gonna bake faster. I'm using cake goop to grease my pan, but honestly, you could just use like a little layer of parchment paper and it would still come out just fine. Cake goop is homemade pan release. It works so good. It's just equal parts, flour, vegetable oil, and shortening. Mix it up until it's nice and smooth and stick it on the shelf and you have pan release whenever you want it. Okay, I'm just gonna divide half my batter in here, smooth it out. This batter is so thick because it's more like a pound cake and uh, you could actually mix in blueberries or you could swirl in cream cheese filling if you wanted to. It's very versatile. All right, now I'm gonna take my cinnamon sugar mixture, sprinkle that all in there, and then we're gonna add a second layer of batter. And then we put the second layer of batter on top. Just gonna smooth it down. It's like when you're making cinnamon rolls and you're just already thinking about how delicious this is gonna taste. <laughs> and now I know you're thinking about cinnamon rolls, so you can click here for that recipe. All right, time to add the crumbs. I'm literally just gonna pick my biggest, most beautiful crumbs and put them on top. You can also use this recipe to make muffins. Like you don't even have to change anything. You can literally just put them into muffin tins and it will be beautiful. Now that is some massive crumbs, I love it. All right, now we're gonna bake this in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 45 minutes. You wanna rotate halfway through just for even browning and test the center with a toothpick to make sure it's fully baked. By the magic of television, our cake is complete. So after your cake is done baking, it's going to need to cool down and that takes several hours. And you know, I've got like kids doing homeschool and taking naps. So I gotta get this ball rolling here. So this is my little switch out cake. It's already ready to go. I just used a little spatula to kind of loosen it from the pan, flipped it out, put it onto a little serving tray and voila, time to glaze. Traditional crumb cake does not have glaze, but coffee cake does. So we're using coffee in our glaze. So it's coffee cake. All right, so I'm gonna add my softened or room temperature cream cheese and just use my hand mixer to just get that smooth. And then we're gonna add in the melted butter. little bit at a time so it doesn't turn into a melted butter slash cream cheese mess. That looks beautiful. And now we're gonna sift in our powdered sugar. People always ask me where I get this sifter from and <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know. I think I got it from Home Goods. I get a lot of my random pans, like my colored cookie sheets and uh, pretty spatulas and stuff like that. It's just like these random finds on Home Goods. And then I actually go to Amazon and I look for these specific things and I can never find them. So if you have a Home Goods, like keep your eyes out. <laughs> this came in a three pack. There was like three sifters. 
And the reason we sift the powdered sugar is just literally so that we don't have big lumps in our glaze. I'm using coffee to thin my glaze out, but you could use milk. Um, you could even use water. You could use espresso if you want more of a coffee flavor. You could put powdered sugar all over the carpet. <laughs> Put the vanilla in. This also makes a really good donut glaze. Use this for like pumpkin donuts. Right. Cream this until it's nice and smooth and you don't see any lumps. And then we're gonna use our coffee to basically thin it down to the consistency that you want it to be. So I like mine a little bit thinner than this because I want to drizzle it over the top. I'm just gonna add some of this lovely glaze to a piping bag or you could use a spoon, whatever you have on hand. Even a Ziploc bag with the corner cut off if you were desperate. And now for the best part, I get to eat this delicious cinnamon crumb cake. I'm actually gonna go right in, grab one of these giant crumbs. Best job ever, honestly. <laughs> crumb cake officially needs to have cream cheese glaze on top because that is the bomb. I think that what sells me on this is the texture of the cake. It's a little bit denser than like a traditional cake, almost like a muffin. So my mind is like, this is actually just breakfast, health food. You know, we've got the cream cheese in there. We've got the cinnamon, just, you know, forget the cake part. So that's it guys. That is how to make the most amazing coffee crumb cake that you've ever had and that I've ever had. Hopefully you've enjoyed this recipe. And if you want to see more, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next week for more tutorials and recipes. Bye. More, more recipes right here. Go on. You know you want to keep binging. You don't have work to do. Just click right here.